Okay, so let's talk about the fourth problem: number of increasing paths in a grid of this contest weekly contest 300. Okay. So before uh, moving on for this problem, I would strongly recommend uh, this problem if you haven't done longest increasing path in a matrix. Yeah, that is good. I think this is the same problem. Like uh, there is a little variation uh, if you solve for this number of increasing paths in a grid with respect to the longest increasing path in a matrix okay i think i have solved this problem yes so uh, i would strongly recommend you to solve this one then come back to this one if you haven't solved this problem okay so uh, this problem basically requires the concept of dynamic programming so in the contest i have solved this problem with the help of top down dynamic programming and i will explain you the best possible approach to solve this problem efficiently so you are given an M into an integer matrix grid where you can move from a cell to any adjacent cell in four directions like up, down, left, right. Return the number of strictly increasing paths in the grid such that you can start from any cell and end at any cell. Since the answer may be very large, return it modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7. Okay, so we can start from any cell and we are going to end at any cell. And two paths are considered different if they do not have the exactly same sequence of visited cells. Okay, now the constraints is also uh, playing an important role. You can see M and N are going to be less than equal to 1000. And total number of cells is at most 10 raised to the power 5. So we can have a matrix or uh, like we can have a lean uh, 2D matrix of size 10 raised to the power 5. Like number of cells would be 10 raised to the power 5 to store the dynamic programming values and yes the time complexity will be O of n into m ok so let's understand this problem with the help of example now we have uh, 4 cells 1 1 3 4 and we need to find out total number of strictly increasing paths in this matrix ok now the path of length 1 let us find out the path of length 1 now this these 4 cells corresponds to the path of length 1 so we will have path of length 1 as 1 1 3 and 4 ok these are the paths of length 1 and talking about the paths of length 2 you can see 1 3 you can see 3 4 you can see 1 4 these are the 3 paths of uh, you can say path of length 2 1 3 and again one foot and finally three okay and what about the paths of length three you can see paths of length three corresponds to this one one three four you can see you can come from one to three you can go to three to four this is the path of length three so there are total exactly eight paths that is present over here okay so but how we are going to solve this one efficiently if you consider the brute force solution it would be like uh, you are going to have O of n into m and then you are going to find out the increasing path from the current cell it would be again n into m so overall O of n square m square so that would give TLE for this problem so let's talk about the efficient way using dynamic programming okay so we will define our state as let us say dp of ig dp of ig will denote the number of paths that end at like that starts from i comma j cell ok so dp of ij will be number of paths that start from i comma j cell ok so let's say we are at this 4 so number of paths which start from index 4 and uh, it corresponds to the increasing like it will move out to the next greater cell so you can see from 4 you cannot move on to the next greater cell because uh, the up cell is containing the value 1 and the left cell contains the value 3. So number of paths uh, whose starting coordinate is uh, at this position will be 1. So let us write it 1 over here. Okay. Now let's talk about this cell, cell with containing value 1. So the, what is the number of paths that starts from the cell 1, 2? 
Note that we are using one based indexing for this explanation. So 1 comma 2 corresponds to this cell and we want to find out number of paths which start from 1 comma 2 cell. Now uh, you can see path of length 1 that is only this cell is going to in, uh, is going to be included in this value number of paths which starts from 1 comma 2 cell and again if you look out for adjacent cell value that is you cannot move out to this position because the next position has the same value as the current uh, value we like we should find out the cell which has value strictly greater than the current value and is adjacent to the current cell okay but we can move to the value Four, which is present down so you can see our number of paths will be uh, incremented by the number of paths that start at this position uh, that uh, this is because we are going to append the this current cell to all those paths which starts at this cell and we can say yes our new current uh, path will start from this cell and we are going to add it to your uh, we are going to add it to our answer if you are not getting it let me tell you uh, in a bit detail you want to find number of paths that start from this position 1 comma 2 1 comma 2 uh, we are already included number paths of length 1 now we, if you include paths of length 2 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 2 is the path of length 2 note that 1 comma 2 has the value 1 and 2 comma 2 has the value 4 and the values are in strictly increasing uh, order because we are going to find number of increasing paths okay so uh, you, what you will do is you will check out the adjacent cells and if the adjacent cells has value strictly greater than the current value you will add up all those paths to your current answer note that you need to also consider the path of length 1 okay and if you are at this 3 cell that is 2 comma 1 you can see path of length 1 will be added and you are going to add up the path of length 2 which is 2 comma 1 and its adjacent cell has the increasing value so you will add up the number of paths that start at this position which is 1 so your current uh, path of length 2 would be 2 comma 2 you can see 2 comma 1 has the value 3 and 2 comma 2 has the value 4 and paths are increasing so there are two paths this one this one okay that starts at this position okay what about the number of paths that starts at this position okay so in that case you will say you will have to first include the paths of length 1 so which is actually 1 comma 1 okay and what about the paths of length 2 you will say yeah this is the paths of length 2 and what about the paths of length 3 you will say yeah this is one but you are not going to do it sequentially what you will do is you will check out the adjacent cells you can see adjacent cell uh, this one 1 hasn't uh, this value is not great strictly greater than this value 1 so you will not check out this one so you will check out this adjacent cell now if at this adjacent cell you can see value is 3 and the current value is 1 which is 3 is strictly greater than 1 so you will add up all those paths that start at this index 3 okay you can see at index 3 there are exactly two paths and so you will add up all those paths that start at index 3 to uh, your answer okay so in that case you can see this path and this path is added now if you add up to the correct answer uh, so one more variable that will be appended right over here that is 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 1 because you have added the paths and this is the valid path this is the valid path and this is the path of length 1 so there exist exactly three paths that starts at this position which is the first path path of length 1 path of length 2 path of length 3 note that all the values are in increasing order this has the value 1 1 comma 1 2 comma 1 has the value 3 you can see 1 is strictly smaller than 3 1 comma 1 has the value 1 2 comma 1 has the value 3 and 2 comma 2 has the value 4 so overall what you will do is you will define a uh, dynamic programming matrix that will store the pre computed values and your state will be dp of yj will denote number of paths that will start at the current cell okay now if this uh, number of paths that start at the current cell 
how do you calculate first of all it you will initialize your current tp of ij with 1 because path of length 1 will be added and for all those adjacent cells which has the value strictly greater than the current cell value you will add up the paths uh, to your current answer this is because you have already calculated the number of paths that in that that adjacent cell and the adjacent cell uh, that with respect to the current cell like adjacent cell has a strictly greater the value than the current cell so current cell can be appended to the beginning of the paths number of paths that you have calculated up to that adjacent cell so in that case uh, you have you are going to easily calculate number of paths that end at the current cell okay so let's move on to the coding part how we are going to implement all that efficiently you can see first i've got the wrong answer because i haven't uh, considered the modulus uh, sign that's a foolish mistake that i have done over this contest yeah so let's define n as grid size m and m as number of columns so my answer will be initialized with zero and we have a dp 2d matrix that will store the pre compute that will store the values so we will call out the dfs function for each cell and uh, we will add up the answer we, uh, like it will denote number of paths that start at the current cell i comma g and we are going to calculate it through this dfs function now this uh, dp of ij will denote number of paths that start at the current cell and we are going to calculate it for each cell now for this dfs function this is actually maintaining doing the top down dynamic programming so when x reaches n or y reaches m we are going to return zero there doesn't exist any path and if we have already calculated that value like the number of paths that starts at the current cell x comma y then we are going to return dp of x y otherwise we will initialize our answer as one one because number of paths of like paths of length one will be added now we will check out the adjacent cells now if adjacent cell doesn't like adjacent cell exists and the current cell value has a strictly smaller than the adjacent cell value like the paths should be increasing so if that holds we will add up all those parts that end at the x plus one comma y that is the at adjacent cell number of paths that starts at that adjacent cell okay if uh, yes we are going to add up all those paths to our answer because uh, this current x cell x comma y can be placed at the beginning of that path because grid of x y is also strictly less than grid of x plus one y so this will correspond to the increasing path similarly we are going to check out for each adjacent cell and add up the number of paths that starts uh, at that adjacent cell to our answer and finally memoize that result dp of x y equal to answer and we are going to return it so this will give you all test cases passed so the time complexity of this solution is o of n into m and the space complexity is also o of n into m so if you guys have still any doubts you can reach out to us through the comment section of the video and thank you for watching this video